7,000 people paid over 200,000 pounds to see it, the greatest soccer game ever played in these islands. England in red instead of their usual white, never before in the World Cup final, but playing a team who've never beaten us before, West Germany, who won the cup in 1954. Bobby Moore and Uwe Saylor exchange banners. Swiss referee Gottfried Dienst spins the coin. And West Germany are to kick off. It's exactly 36 years to the day since the very first final in Montevideo. For the thousands at Wembley, for the millions who've been following the contest all over the world, this is the climax. One of the three West Ham players in the side, number 16, Martin Peter. In the German goal, Tilkowski. Nobby Styles in a movement which is to end with Tilkowski clashing with Jeff Hurst. And Tilkowski is injured in the face. But thank heavens, the injury wasn't serious. Hurt, number 10. But Emmerich fails to complete. Then after 12 minutes, Hurt has the ball again. England fails to clear his center, and Haller pounces on it to score. Oddly enough, no team which scored first has ever won a World Cup final. Would this jinx work for England? Would victory crown their first appearance in the final? Only six minutes after Germany's opener, Bobby Moore is fouled by Overright. Moore takes the kick, and Jeff Hurst puts England level. They were to Sailor in a dangerous retaliation. It featured Haller, number eight. And over at 12. Danger Man Hurt was always around. But English feet stay firmly in control. Now Helt takes a corner for Germany. And now it's England with an offensive that must have warmed Alf Ramsey's heart. And it's still stalemate at half time. England kick off for phase two. Peters again. Germany's over at to help. And on to Beckenbauer, one of the outstanding players in the championship.
Gordon Banks, as always, superbly confident. Peters has another go. But his glory was to come. Ball takes a corner. Hurst has a go, but out it comes to Peters. With that superb shot, England are in the lead. If they can hold on for 13 more minutes, the championship is theirs. But Haller, Helt and Emmerich make those minutes seem like hours. It puts years on you, waiting to see if England can make it a certainty, to see if Bobby Charlton can make it 3-1. Not that time, nor this time for Germany. Then only 30 seconds from the whistle, a free kick for Germany. Weber has equalized. The World Cup has slipped from her fingers. So it's extra time. 30 more minutes of agonizing effort over this exhausting rain-soaked turf. For Germany, it's the chance to steal victory from the very jaws of defeat. Held centers, and there's nobody there. The psychological effect on England must have been horrifying. But with men like Alan Ball and George Cohen, every problem has an answer. It came in the tenth minute. Ball passes to Hurst, and he scores England's third. The referee had to consult the Russian linesman before awarding the goal. It was strongly disputed on the grounds it hadn't crossed the line. Another camera angle may help you to decide for yourself. So England were in the lead, but not out of trouble after changing ends for the second half of extra time. Then with the crowd calling for time and the final whistle only seconds away, England get the ball upfield and Hurst goes through on his own. With his third goal in the game, Jeff Hurst confirms the victory beyond any shadow of doubt. From the Queen, Bobby Moore receives the trophy, the golden symbol of international supremacy. All honour to England and all praise to West Germany. Few other teams would have made such worthy finalists. To Alf Ramsey, our admiration and our thanks. Remember, three and a half years ago, he said, we will win the cup in 1966. In doing so, England has won more than the trophy. She's achieved a new stature in the game she gave the world.